Okay, let's do the thumbnail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Type Pollution. I'm really excited about this video. Thank you so much for 500 subscribers. We cracked that code, okay? This video is my thank you to my subscribers, my viewers, anyone who has been supporting me and Type Pollution up until this point. I know especially the last year was pretty rough for everyone involved, but thankfully and fortunately last year was also a year of growth, especially for Type Pollution and my theories and my videos. So thanks again for everyone who has subscribed to me in the past and also in the last year and who's gonna keep subscribing to me in the future. This all started back around 2013-2014 when I discovered personality type theory and when I really dove into it. So I discovered and I came to the three main points that I want to share with you now, the three main things I've learned and the three main things I want to develop further in the future as well. So number one, your Jungian type is about self-discovery, not self-development. So when it comes to the Jungian type, which I mean MBTI, Socionics, the 16 personality types, in this case, it's not about self-development, okay? I really want to emphasize this. I'm going to make more videos about that probably. Self-development is very popular at the moment. It's like a buzzword. Everyone wants to develop their personality, right? Also often stemming from some kind of place of insecurity or feeling like something is wrong with me, so I should change my personality, right? But this is the problem. The problem is usually when we mistype us or others, it's because we are not embracing our personality, we're not embracing the what I call purpose role or social role that is most suited to your personality type. You are trying out other social roles or trying out other purpose roles or just not aligned with who you really are. So what I've found is with some coaching clients in particular, it's really it can be really bizarre to the point where they are like they've been to so many people who have been typing them so many things so many different things as well and then at the end it's like okay like i have to rediscover who i really am <laughs> which is a bit odd right you are naturally this kind of personality type but you've been neglecting this function or this cognitive function because yeah probably because of your environment right because the people in your environment don't really value it or the society you're in does not seem to really support it that well, at least at the moment. Yeah, this can be really challenging. Rediscovering who you are and embracing your personality is really important to typing yourself correctly and also not just typing yourself correctly. This is like the first step. <laughs> it's about really embracing who you are. Once in a while I find someone who is really embracing their personality. I don't know, I don't have to tell them that much, you know? It's like, okay, you're already embracing your functions in the way you should, and in quotation marks, you should, in the sense that you are, you know, embracing your personality type, you're not trying to be a different personality, you're not trying to improve your weaknesses to some, I don't know, insane amount, obscene, or I wanted to say obscene, right? And it's just a shame because you are neglecting the gifts that you have based on your personality type. It's about discovering who you really are. This is what I find important. So yeah, and this is not part of my videos at this moment, but maybe in the future where I've got the TVT type, so type evolution taxonomy. Someone else came up with that term. I took it on and I made a TVT because it sounds kind of cool, right? <laughs> anyway, so you can find those types on typeevolution.com. So far, I've got eight descriptions. This is me basically merging MBTI with Socionics, taking the what I deem to be the most valuable aspects from both descriptions, and then adding on top of it what I call the purpose or social role that is most suitable to them, that is gonna bring the most fulfillment, and that is gonna be the highest expression of your type and yourself combining that and then this is my type description so I've got eight so far I'm gonna keep working on those 
so you can keep checking my blog as well, tagvolution.com. And yeah, I really believe that we will find the most fulfillment if we engage with our predisposed purpose role, right? So yeah, and this is based on your personality type, your cognitive functions, your dichotomies and all that stuff. So yeah, of course, especially during times like these, during Corona or other times that are very challenging and that require certain skills over others, we cannot always have a job or profession that matches our purpose role, at least in a particular time frame. It can be challenging sometimes. Sometimes we just gotta make money to live. So I'm not gonna tell you, okay, you should just quit your job and just jump into your, your purpose role, right? But I would advise to at least have something on the side that nurtures or fulfills that need or that brings out your personality, that makes you embrace it. Otherwise, you're gonna lose yourself. And this, is really, this can be really damaging to your psyche. As I said, as I kept saying, it's about the rediscovery of yourself. But at the end of the day, it does lead to your self-development, <laughs> you know, because you're going to feel way more fulfilled and you're going to employ your strengths in a suitable manner without obsessing over your weaknesses because they are not really worth the examination anyway. Yeah, this is a problem, especially with our education system where we are often, it's often attempted that we are going to fit into a certain kind of mold just based on certain external parameters and not necessarily our real personalities. So just be aware of that, you know. Don't succumb to that pressure too much. As I said, it's okay to make money doing something that's not really fitting you, you know. But at the same time, ideally you find a profession that does fit your personality type and your social purpose role. But also, you know, if that's not possible, at least have a hobby or some side passion or business that does that. So in my case, this is what happened to me. So <laughs> I call the IEI slash INFJ uh, the psychoanalyst. So this is basically what I'm doing here with my videos, with my blogs. <laughs> this is me expressing my, my belief, my purpose role and yeah. This brings me a lot of happiness. So once again, thank you for the 500 subscribers. And before I go to the next point, what also helped me a lot was having someone in my life, someone who's, who I'm close to, who suits my personality type. So the two main things when it comes to this point are embracing your personality and then also being close with someone who embraces your personality. And this is usually gonna be someone who has a compatible personality type. Under each type description, I've also added the compatible types, but generally speaking, in my opinion, I agree with Socionics that says having the same cognitive functions just in a different order is the most compatible. So this is my advice in this regard, and this is also what helped me with embracing my personality and just improving my quality of life. Okay, number two. Enneagram type is about self-development, self-growth. So this is why many people actually prefer Enneagram because Enneagram is actually about development, about growth. There are also health levels, mental health levels essentially in the Enneagram. Nine of them, three are healthy, three are average, three are unhealthy. And most Enneagram type descriptions describe the person who is like around the average to unhealthy levels. So here it really is about self-development, really, sort of speak, moving up the ladder of mental health, right? <laughs> in Enneagram, the interesting thing is embracing yourself too much can actually cause a lot of darkness, a lot of turmoil, a lot of imbalance. If you embrace your, your Enneagram type too much, if you become too self-identified with a certain what I call ego identity, it actually causes issues. So it's actually about sort of becoming more free from it, but then embracing it later down the line. So you could maybe say it's about first, in the case of Jungian type, first embracing it and then developing it. In the case of Enneagrams, first about developing it and then embracing it later when it's at the healthier level. No one else is saying this. I feel like I'm the only one who keeps saying this. But if you fulfill your instincts, 
in my opinion, in my observation, this is the only and the strongest and most powerful way you're gonna improve your health levels. I mean, yeah, it helps to, you know, know about your Enneagram type as well, to know about your fixation and knowing, okay, when I think a certain way, it's just my ego, it's my ego identity, it's not really who I truly am. There are other ways of seeing this particular issue. But this is just one side of it. If you don't if you don't improve your instincts, if you don't do enough to fulfill the needs of your social, sexual and self-preservation instincts, you're still not gonna be fulfilled or happy enough. Like you're still not gonna move up the health levels. Okay, a little bonus tip that is actually quite important. So the way you can grow and improve your mental health and just your personal well-being is by acknowledging the instincts and your Enneagram type, of course, and adding or employing the strengths of your personality type, the inherent strengths that your personality type possesses. And that strength is usually embracing your purpose role. I've got eight of them so far, so you can find them on my website, on my blog, typevolution.com. At this point, I can mention them, I can maybe list them here besides me, so you can see them. And yeah, if you do that, then you're gonna dramatically increase your personal well-being and happiness. I believe in my case what I did. So my purpose role based on my Jungian type is the psychoanalyst. And my instinctual stacking is social sexual. Me using my strengths and doing videos like these, for example, and sharing my so-called kind of psychoanalytical findings, theories, and so forth, did help me with improving my social instinct and also my sexual instincts needs. That way I was able to do things that make me feel like I'm contributing to society in a meaningful way. And it also helped me with improving my closer relationships. So yeah, yeah, I usually tend to find the videos video topics the most interesting when they are dealing with things that are sort of eternal that are valuable or relevant despite the current circumstances that are kind of universal you know i prefer these kinds of videos so like i said when i talk like when i talk about the dark side of each enneagram instinctual stacking like this is something that is sort of universal eternal some kind of yeah, symbolism of course that exists no matter what is the current era or side guys i know this is the problem with that is that uh people who have more current videos you know like videos that are dealing with current uh, life events tend to get more views of because yeah they're more current whereas with my thing it's more very um it's almost removed from that it's pretty much removed from that oftentimes and it's yeah, so I know I have to bring it back more to what's current or what you currently struggle with or find interesting. So yeah, now please tell me what are your favorite videos and what kinds of videos you want to keep seeing in the future. So then I know, okay, all right, I'm gonna try to make that work, you know. And I want to say, okay, yeah, this is another thing. Someone asked me to do an Instagram account so, I mean, I'm just asking you guys, would you be interested in that? Would you be interested in Instagram? I mean, I personally do not use Instagram. Uh, I kind of struggle with it. But if you really would like that, I will probably try. Uh, so, okay, let me know what you think about that. And a little bonus, because you've been watching the video until the very end. If you send me a message with the word flamingo, then you can get a free coaching slash consulting session with me. So what that means is you can ask me questions for half an hour or you can also, if you don't want to do that, like if you don't want to type, have like a text chat with me, then you can also just write me some kind of longer email and I'm going to answer your questions in there. I'm... I'm unlikely gonna type you guys based on that. I mean, I do have a speed typing uh, service, but 
I still think the speed typing is not the best way to type someone, so I would still prefer it if you actually booked a proper typing session with me. But yeah, I will still offer you this thing where it's like a consulting or co coaching, you know, like you can ask me questions about personality type theory or other things in that realm. So yeah, oh, oh, I almost, I almost forgot. So yeah, in the future, there's probably gonna be another milestone. I don't expect it to just be 500 subscribers, so at some point, if I'm at a very, very other level with it, the flamingo thing won't work anymore, so I'm just gonna warn you guys. I see that all, this also with other YouTubers who say, okay, yeah, you can do this and that, and then, like, time down the line, people keep asking for it, and they're like, well, it's kind of expired, you know, like, it was just for this particular time. So yeah, this flamingo thing is not gonna be there forever, so, yeah, make use of it for as long as I, uh, make use of it, okay? All right, that's it. Once again, thank you so much, and I hope you guys will have a wonderful year, and yeah, please keep sharing, keep engaging with the subjects and the content that I put out, and this is just gonna inspire me to do even more, so thank you. Have a good day, bye.